Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the truth about antibiotics. Um, this is something that I prepared and got together. Uh, just to kind of go over what antibiotics are, uh, what they're used for, uh, the dangers of antibiotics, and we're going to talk about misuse of antibiotics as well. Uh, first of all, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Trey Harris. I've been a registered nurse uh, since 2010. Uh, I'm currently uh, working at East Mississippi Correctional Facility um, over infection control there and uh, do the CQI studies. So uh, it's an interesting job so far. Um, and as, I, if I'm, as I'm going through this, if y'all want to speak up and say anything as we're going along, that'll be fine. First off, we're going to start off with the objectives. Um, the first one says, at the conclusion of this presentation, the participants will be able to identify correct usage of antibiotics. At the conclusion of this presentation, the participants will be able to identify how bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics. And finally, at the conclusion of this presentation, the participants will be able to identify ways to help decrease antibiotic resistance. Quick little outline, we're going to go over the definition, the history, facts, usage, misuse, what is antibiotic resistance. Uh, how antibiotic resistance occurs, and then finally, uh, preventing antibiotic resistance. To start off, um, what are antibiotics? We, we take them all the time. It seems like, and really probably more so than what we should, and that's something that I'm going to cover here. Um, it seems like any time that we go to the doctor's office with any kind of <coughs> sniffles or cough or anything, Doctors or nurse practitioners, whatever the provider is, is wanting to just jot that antibiotic down and give you the prescription and send you on your way. And uh, we're going to go over all of that here in just a few minutes and talk about what some better choices that we can do besides that. Uh, like I said, first off, what are antibiotics? They're a type of antimicrobial agent made from a mold <coughs> that kills or slows the growth of other bacteria. Uh, some examples would include penicillin or streptomycin, and there's a bunch of antibiotics that fall underneath those two. Under penicillin, you've got amoxicillin and several others. Um, streptomycin is the same way. It's, they're kind of umbrella terms there. Uh, a little history on it. Alexander Fleming, he, was, uh, he first discovered the first antibiotic in 1928. Uh, the name of that first antibiotic was penicillin. That is still used uh, a good bit today. I can't take it myself. I'm allergic to it. But uh, uh, with a lot of uh, providers, that is, as long as the bacteria is, is sensitive to uh, penicillin, they like to uh, prescribe that. Um, just a quick history from 1983. And this uh, chart right here, it stops in 2012. So I don't have the last six years. Information, but this just kind of just gives you a general idea of how in the past we started out, we were just popping out antibiotic one right after another, finding new ones, and as the years are going on, we're being able to discover less and less. So, uh, from 1983 to 1987, the total number of new antibacterial agents was 16. Uh, from 88 to 92, that fell down to 14. Uh, from 1993 to 1997, that fell down to 10. 98 to 2002, that was roughly around 7 there. 2003 to 2007, uh, we'll say that's 5. And as you can see, from 2008 to 2012, there were one but two new antibacterial agents that were discovered. So that's another problem that we're running into today. Is we're... We're not being as, as active and being able to find new antibiotics to treat some of these resistant uh, bacteria that have come along. Uh, some facts about antibiotics. Uh, while antibiotics are life-saving drugs that treat bacterial infections, they are not without risk. Antibiotics are the most common cause of emergency department visits for adverse drug events in children under 18 years of age. And I didn't know that myself before I went into this study, so I, I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. Um, some more facts. Uh, antibiotics don't fight viruses. They fight bacteria. Uh, this seems to be a common problem with, with a lot of people. They get confused over antivirals and antibiotics. 
uh, going into that further, taking on antibiotics for a viral infection such as a cold, a cough, or a flu, it's not going to cure the infection. Those are not bacterial infections, so if you're taking an antibiotic for those, you're just wasting your time and you're harming yourself in the long run because you're going to allow uh, other bacteria that will be introduced to your body in the future to become resistant to the one that you antibiotic that you took, and it didn't help you at all. All it did was just cause you more harm. Uh, taking antibiotics increases your risk of getting an antibiotic resistant infection later, which is what I pretty much what I just said. And antibiotics kill the healthy bacteria in the gut. We all have uh, normal flora, normal bacteria that's in our intestines. Uh, that that helps fight off other infections. And if you're taking a bunch of antibiotics, not only are you killing the bad bacteria, but you're going to kill the good bacteria as well. And a lot of times that can cause um, that C. difficile, that's Clostridium difficile. Um, it's an ugly bug that you can get, and it, it causes you stomach pain, diarrhea, and things such as that. And just not a fun, not a fun place to be with all of that. Facts about antibiotics. Uh, right here is a little map of the United States, and um, it kind of just gives an overview of where the highest prescribing rates by state are as far as uh, prescribing antibiotics. As you can see, Mississippi, we're down in the highest, and, and I believe that because it seems like all providers in, in this state, uh, as long as I can remember coming up, I mean, they, the first thing they want to do is just pop out an antibiotic and sends you on your way, and a lot of people, the first thing they're asking for when they come in there is, give me an antibiotic, you know, and, well, you know, some of these younger providers are coming along, they're trying to build clientele, they don't want to make somebody mad, they don't want to run them off, so they're just trying to please them, they'll write them an antibiotic the same on the way, but that's not, the, that's not what they really need to be doing. Uh, some more facts about antibiotics, some of these we've already covered, but um, there's a couple of more that were, were interesting here. They're life-saving drugs. They treat bacterial infections only. Some ear infections do not require an antibiotic. Most sore throats do not require an antibiotic. Green-colored mucus is not a sign that an antibiotic is needed. And my whole time when I've always come up, I always was told that means you've got an infection, you need to get an antibiotic right then. Um, but a lot of times, if, um, especially right now, I fight cold sinus issues every day, allergies, and if that mucus just sits inside your lungs overnight and all, it can become a dark green color like that as well. Um, so it's not always just a clear-cut sign that that is infection. Most of the time it is, and you know, and if it is, then yes, an antibiotic would be needed for that. Um, and of course, there are potential risks when taking any prescription drugs, so that's not just antibiotics, it's all of them. Um, Antibiotics, uh, they treat strep, whooping cough, uh, urinary tract infections, any kind of wound infection caused by a bacteria. Uh, of course, that's not all things that, uh, that antibiotics treat, but that's just, you know, just a few little examples there. Misuse of antibiotics. Antibiotics cure bacterial infections, not viral infections, such as colds or flu, most coughs and bronchitis, most sore throats, or running noses. Uh, continuing in with the misuse of antibiotics, studies indicate that 30 to 50 percent of antibiotics prescribed in hospitals are unnecessary or inappropriate. Uh, 50 percent of all the antibiotics prescribed for people are not needed or not optimally effective as prescribed. Uh, understanding inappropriate antibiotic use. Inappropriate antibiotic use can refer to two types of antibiotic misuse. When an antibiotic is prescribed but not needed, or when the wrong antibiotic dose or duration is chosen. Uh, to give some more examples for that to make more sense, unnecessary use or overuse. Example, a 40-year-old woman is diagnosed with bronchitis and prescribed an antibiotic, even though national guidelines recommend against prescribing antibiotics for bronchitis. Uh, misuse or incorrect prescriptions, an example would be an 8-year-old boy is diagnosed with strep throat and needs an antibiotic to treat it but the antibiotic prescribed is the wrong one, or the dose is too low, or the duration is too long, or having you take it for too long. And these are common things that happen all the time. Antibiotic resistance. 
That's when bacteria no longer responds to the drug designed to kill them. It's happening right now across the world. So, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really a serious thing that really needs to be looked into. A lot of people are talking about the opioid crisis right now, and of course it needs to be looked at, but uh, there's going to soon, if we don't change our ways the way we're prescribing all these antibiotics, there's going to be a crisis as far as bacteria is not being able to be treated. Uh, without urgent action, modern medicine will be obsolete, and minor injuries will once again be dead. <laughs> How antibiotic resistance happens? Uh, one, lots of germs, and a fewer drug resistant. Um, you may have heard of people talk about MRSA, MRSA. That's methicillin resistant Staph aureus. Um, most of your staph infections are caused by a, a form of Staph aureus, but that, the MRSA in particular is resistant to that drug methicillin. So it's kind of hard, it's, it's difficult to find another antibiotic that will treat that. And that's the problem that comes along. There's becoming more and more. Uh, Bacteria that are becoming like MRSA, they're becoming resistant to these antibiotics that we've had, and then therefore we're having a hard time getting rid of these infections. Um, antibiotics kill bacteria causing the illness as well as good bacteria protecting the body from infection. The drug resistant bacteria are now allowed to grow and take over. Uh, some bacteria give their drug resistance to other bacteria causing more problems, so we're just compounding. <clears throat> Each year in the United States, at least 2 million people become infected with bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, and at least 23,000 people die as a direct result of these infections. I did not know that. I know it. That's, that's, that's amazing. Scary. The use of antibiotics is the single most important factor leading to antibiotic resistance around the world. Antibiotic resistance adversely impacts the health of millions of hospitalized patients every year. Some infections in hospitals are now resistant to all available antibiotics. It's, it's, it's a scary thought, really. Uh, super resistant bacteria. Um, that's a problem today, crisis tomorrow. Uh, kind of what I'm getting at there. Uh, they're also known as super infections. And that's what I've been talking about is these bacteria becoming smarter and smarter and becoming more resistant to these antibiotics out there. In India, 58,000 plus babies died in one year from super resistant bacterial infections, which are usually passed on from their mothers. In the European Union, antibiotic resistance causes 25,000 deaths per year and 2.5 million extra hospital beds. In Thailand, antibiotic <laughs> resistance causes 38,000 plus deaths per year and million hospital days. Here in the United States, antibiotic resistance causes 23,000 plus deaths per year and more than 2 million illnesses. So, I mean, it's, it's all over the world. It's not just our country. Uh, Preventing antibiotic resistance. Patients, healthcare providers, hospital administrators, and policymakers must work together to use effective strategies for improving antibiotic use, ultimately improving medical care and saving lives. Since it will be many years before new antibiotics are available to treat some resistant infections, and we saw that looking back over the last several years, how that's dwindling down, we need to improve the use of antibiotics that are currently available and not misuse them. Rational antibiotic use, including education of healthcare workers and the public, and the appropriate use of antibiotics. Strict adherence to infection prevention and control measures. Um, <coughs> Including safe hand washing measures, particularly in healthcare facilities. Hand washing is the number one way to control any kind of infection. Just some simple soap and water goes a long ways. Using antibiotics wisely is the best way to ensure they work for future bacterial illnesses and prevent unnecessary side effects. Keep up with vaccinations. You know, this is a big thing these days too. You got some parents out there that aren't wanting to get their kids vaccinated, and yes, we all have our own choices in life, and I understand it's their kids, they'll do what they want with them, but you're not thinking about the other kids, other people that's out there that you're affecting and all. It's not just you in this world. So keep up with vaccinations. Vaccinations help prevent infections that may require antibiotics and help prevent diseases from spreading. Um, when you go to the doctor, if you feel that you may have an infection, a bacterial infection in particular, ask about symptom relief. 
Never pressure your healthcare professional for antibiotics. Instead, ask for the best treatment for your illness. Talk to your healthcare professional or pharmacist about how to relieve symptoms so that you can feel better. Only take antibiotics for infections caused by bacteria. Illnesses caused by viruses like the common cold and flu do not improve with antibiotics. Using antibiotics when they are not needed can cause harmful side effects and make antibiotics less powerful against certain bacteria. Ask if watchful waiting is right for you. And what watchful waiting is, it says, even if some bacterial infections like mild sinus and ear infections that we all seem to fight with, they can get better without antibiotics. For some illnesses, your healthcare professional may recommend watchful waiting, meaning waiting a few days to see if you get better before deciding to prescribe antibiotics. I mean, our, our bodies do have their own immune systems and uh, a lot of times, if we can just kind of wait it out, we can fight off a lot of things besides going and jumping right on to an antibiotic right off the bat. Um, and then this is another thing right here. Take antibiotics exactly as prescribed. Even if you feel better, do not skip doses or stop taking the antibiotic early without approval from your healthcare professional. I have seen this so many times, even family members and especially working in, the, in the healthcare, somebody gets to feeling better, and they were supposed to take that antibiotic for seven days or on the fourth or fifth day, they feel all right. Well, I'm just not going to take it anymore. But what you're doing is you're allowing that bacteria that you had to be able to build up a tolerance. So next time you get ready to take that same antibiotic, it, it's not going to help you as, as well as it would have before. Throw leftover antibiotics away. Never save antibiotics for future illnesses. Take antibiotics prescribed for others or share antibiotics with others. Talk to your pharmacist about how to dispose of leftover antibiotics. And I haven't been noticing there's a commercial on TV that they got these little bins that you can take your old medications and just drop them in there. Uh, that's one way that we can do that now. <clears throat> For upper respiratory infections such as sore throats, ear infections, sinus infections, colds, bronchitis, try the following. Get plenty of rest, drink plenty of fluids, use a clean humidifier or a cool mist vaporizer. Avoid smoking, secondhand smoke, and other pollutants, such as airborne chemicals or irritants. Uh, take acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or naproxen to relieve the pain or, or any kind of fever that you may have, and use saline nasal sprays or drops. <clears throat> as far as hand washing goes, wet your hands with clean running water, warm or cold, it, it, that's your preference is what you want to do as far as that. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Be sure to lather the backs of your hands, between your fingers, under your nails. We have so much bacteria that we like to get under our fingernails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. If you need a timer, hum happy birthday song from beginning to end twice, and you'll be perfect as far as the time limit to make sure that your hands are good and clean. Uh, rinse your hands well under clean running water, and then finally dry your hands using a clean towel or ear dryer. And then finally, if you want any more information on the antibiotics, uh, you can go to cdc.gov. They've got all kinds of information on there. But I just want to thank you all for coming out today and uh, hearing me out on this. And I have a question. Okay. Uh, you hear a lot nowadays about staph infection. Right. In the hospitals and all. What uh, causes that and what kind of treatment do they use for that? Well, a big reason for that is they're not being, and fish control is not really doing their job like they need to be doing in these hospitals. Um, improper hand washing, just to start with, is a big thing. If you're not washing your hands well and you're going from a sick patient over here and you go over here and you just touch this countertop and you grab this doorknob, anything like that, you've got traffic coming in behind you, they're touching those same countertops, they may be opening up a chart that you've opened up and you've got bacteria on them, opening a doorknob. That's just one, you know, a, a simple example right there is how easily bacteria can start spreading throughout the hospital. Um, and of course, what they would do once they find out what kind of bacteria that is, they'll culture it to find that out and then they'll do a sensitivity report on that culture and that'll let them know what, what antibiotic those bacteria are either resistant to or sensitive to. Okay. 
and um, they'll have like certain numbers on the list on there, and normally they'll the doctors are going to choose one that it's uh, got a high sensitivity rate to that, and that's what they'll prescribe for that. So, okay. that's, yeah, any more questions? Well, again, I thank y'all for coming out and uh, allowing me to speak to y'all, and I hope that y'all got something good out job. of this. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.